I'm going to show you how to make a couple more projects with the Christmas Dazzle Treasure Box. Now, this is a link that came in the Treasure Box, and it is best served just linked together the way I did it. It's um, this way because it's one-sided. It doesn't flip. The way I've put them together is very simple, very quick project, but it turns out just adorable, works really well, doesn't flip. I mean, if you really mess with it and if you put your toggle on incorrectly, they're going to flip over. But generally, it wears really, really well. And because I have so many of these links left over, you can purchase a kit on my website if you'd like. It's really simple. I think it's going to be like $9. I may change my mind, but I think it's going to be $9. In this kit, you are going to get enough to make two bracelets just like this. So you're going to get 20 links. In mine, I used nine, but I know that some people have a little bit bigger wrist. And you can also adjust that if you even need even more length, you can add more jump rings on the end of your clasping also, or use a bigger clasp. But I'm going to put enough um, jump rings to make two bracelets, enough links to make two bracelets and two clasps. <clears throat> These are nice, heavy stainless steel jump rings and um, they are a little bit more expensive than the little cheapies you get in most boxes. These are nice ones. These links are very nice. They're stainless steel. So it's a nice little kit and um, I will have it on there. The only thing that'll be different is I use a little, in the tutorial, I use a little smaller jump ring to put my clasping on. You can do that if you want, or you can use these, as these are just a tiny bit smaller than the jump rings I used over here. However, I put together the links and these work great. So you can use what's in your package or if you want to, you can reduce the size and the end of the clasping like I show you on the tutorial. But anyway, that's available. I just wanted to let you know because I have so many of these that some things from the treasure box, sometimes I'll end up with a ton extra and some things I'm short on. It's just weird. Anyway, we're also going to be making this necklace, the one with the great big um, pendant drop. We're going to use it, and I have added some of my own rondelles, but I also have those on the website if you want some. If not, just use them in your stash. But this is the way that I put the front together. I want you to see. The way I put it together, these three rondelles, and you can do it with any bead, hang beautifully over the front of this big pendant and this just makes a really really pretty presentation looks great on the neck and it's got a great sparkle it looks really nice I really like this necklace I was really happy with it and it's a very simple process so let's go ahead and get started I'm not going to show you materials per se because I'll show you them as I make the tutor tutorials because um, I really didn't plan this. I was just making it as I did it. But it's everything that's in the treasure box and I will also announce the sizes and types of things that I'm using during the process. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is use the links, the flower links that came in the Christmas Dazzle treasure box and just make a really simple linked together bracelet. I'm using one of the clasps that also came in the Christmas Dazzle treasure box, but I'm using jump rings that actually came in my first treasure box, the Summer, um, summer Sparkle. But these are five millimeter round and they're stainless steel color. I'm thinking that it'll be fine with the bright silver and the darker color because I have antique silver colored links. So I'm thinking it'll go together better. Now, of course, you can use the jump rings that came in the Christmas Dazzle box also. They're just a little bit bigger than these, so they have more of a presence and they'll give you more length. However, you may not have enough of those left, too. So you can use whatever jump rings you want. This is about a five millimeter round open jump ring, and it's stainless steel. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two jump rings between each link until I get the length that I want for my bracelet. The reason I'm putting two is because these will flip if you just put one. If you put two, they will stay on, they'll stay level. They won't flip so much. 
So this is what I'm going to do is these are already open. I may need to open them a little bit more, but let me grab another plier here and I'm just going to start linking these links together. So I'm just going to pick up one, slide on a jump ring, and then slide on another link. Make sure they're both facing the same direction as you do so. And then I'm just going to close these jump rings. And these jump rings are really nice heavy jump rings. So I just closed it. Now, of course, if you have a jump ring, if you're a real beginner and you don't know how to open your jump rings, let me grab one that's already closed. These are, these I purchased them open, but most of the time they're closed. And so my opening of my jump ring is right here. I can see where it's cut. I put my plier on half of the jump ring and then my other plier on the other half and just twist like that. And that's how you open a jump ring. Now I'm going to grab another jump ring and I'm just going to bend these two links over and see if I can link it right next to the other link that I put on. Yep, that's not going to work, so I'll just do it this way and then into this link also. Let me open that a little more. So I'm just going to go through one, making sure I don't go through the other jump ring that's already on there. Once I have it on, then I can just close it. And then I have two linked together really nicely. So I'm going to continue linking them together. I have to close that one a little tighter. And then I'll be right back and show you the length. Okay, so I have put together nine of my links, just like I showed you. I just put two jump rings in between each link and just continued down the row connecting them together. Now, you can see that if I go halfway through my toggle here, I have a seven inch bracelet. What I am doing, and this is nine of them, you have 10, so you can make an eight inch, or seven and a half, eight inch, by, you can regulate the size by adding jump rings on the end too. Now what I'm doing, or a bigger toggle, this is a small toggle. On this end, I used one of the jump rings of the same size, the five millimeter round, and I connected it to the end link and to the toggle, just one. But on this end, you need to narrow down the end so that the toggle functions properly because if this end is too wide, it will not go through the circular end of the toggle. So what I've done is I've gotten out two smaller jump rings. They're still nice, heavy jump rings, but they're smaller ones. They are about four millimeter jump rings, if I can get one so you can see it. And I opened up two of them, or I opened up one, put it on the toggle end, and then opened up another one and put it on that first one I put on. And now I'm just going to slide this onto my last link, and then I will have a little over a seven inch bracelet. And you can always add, you can put an extender, you can put several jump rings or a piece of chain, and a big jump ring on one end and a lobster claw clasp. So you could just put on this end, you could put a jump ring and a bigger jump ring. On this end, put several jump rings and a lobster claw clasp. That's the way you can extend your length. Of course, you can shorten it by using less of your links. There are several ways that you can do that. Even on this one, I could have put three or four jump rings instead of just two, but I don't need more than two. So I am just going to use two. If I can open this back up again. My eyes are not allowing me to see this. There we go. So I'm going to open this second jump ring up. Pop it on here. Close it. And then Now I have a bracelet, and I can just pop this on, 
and it should stay pretty well without turning too much because of the fact that I put two jump rings in between and didn't have huge jump rings smaller jump rings and I just put them in between and now I have a bracelet and you see it it stays it doesn't turn and flip and do all kinds of weird stuff you don't want to make it a really long length for your particular wrist or the person you're making it for or it may turn a little you just want it to have some nice movement and stay in place well hang on a second it's scam likely phone call there, rid of it. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And that's a really simple, fast, easy gift you can make with your Christmas box or something for yourself. It really turns out pretty. I like it. Let's make something else. Okay, I want you to design something with this clear crystal that came in your treasure box. It has a little pinch bail on it. And what I've decided to do is I've decided to take the pinch bail, the bail portion off, not the whole bail, and put a jump ring on like this. So all you have to do to take this off, if you want to, if you're just going to string it on something, just leave it on there and string through this bail portion. But if you want to do what I'm going to do, and I'm doing it this way to allow myself to have um, some dangles on it. So you just go down to the bottom where it's skinniest, give it a little clip with your wire cutters. Mine are kind of dull, so let's see if I can do this. There, I give it a little clip, and then I can just pull, just straighten it out and pull it off of the bale. And then you just have a loop left. And then I just opened a jump ring. Oops, I don't know why that's getting cloudy like that. Um, I just opened a jump ring, put it on to the loop, and these are the jump rings that came in the treasure box. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather a few things together, and um, we're going to make a necklace with this, with some dangles and some little components like this. So I'm using a eight by six rondelle clear. I have these on my website too if you want some. Otherwise, you could use the red ones that came in your box if you still have a bunch or just whatever's in your stash. And it doesn't have to be an eight by six rondelle either. It could be a six millimeter round, whatever you want it to be. So let me gather a few things and we'll make okay. a necklace. So what I've done is I've taken some 20 gauge artistic wire and I've just cut an inch and a quarter of the wire and several sections. You'll need quite a few of them or you can just use a head pin. The reason I'm not using a head pin is because I want my links on either side to be bigger than most head pins generally are. So I'm just using wire. However, even if you want your links to be better, bigger, you could use a head pin. Just cut off the existing head pin part, the circle on it, and make your own with that head pin. And I will show you how to wrap an end for a head pin. And uh, we're going to make several of these and then we're going to um, get this little guy ready for some um, dangles. And we're going to make three dangles like this. So you're going to need a couple head pins. And I didn't get those. Let me see here. Three head pins. I think I'll make three dangles. You can make more if you want. But you'll need three head pins, and I've just got these little short head pins. And these are just, a head pin is just a piece of wire with a, like a nail head on the end of it. And I've got three of those. And let's start by making one of these wrapped components. And we'll just set that aside, and the jump rings aside, and we'll make a wrapped component with a head pin, and then one that's a link like this one. So the first thing you're going to need is pick out whichever bead you're going to use to dangle over your crystal. Like I said, mine's an eight by six rondelle. I'm just gonna straighten out my head pin here and I'm just gonna drop the bead onto the head pin. I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and just a little bit above the crystal, like a millimeter. I am going to place them and then bend that wire over the top of the crystal, just like that. 
And then I'm going to place this over my forefinger and I like to cut it about the width of the meaty part of my finger here, just like this. So it's about a quarter inch and I just cut that off. And then, those won't work, you need your round nose pliers and you need to place it, you can put it right back over your finger, place it at the very end of your wire where you cut it and not quite halfway down the plier here is the size loop I want. So I'm just going to start to turn until I can't turn anymore, reposition my wrist, just roll it forward, and then continue to turn. And then when I'm almost there, I take the tip of my round nose pliers, I go towards the end here, and I just bring it in like this. And that's how you will make that. And go ahead and make three of those. And then we're going to make a bunch of these, and I'm not sure exactly how many yet, but I'm going to show you how to make this. And we'll want to have at least two made up for the next step, just so that we can um, proceed forward after we make the dangles on the um, pendant. So how you make this is, like I said, I've cut some wire. I'm just going to make sure it's flush cut on the ends here. This side of your plier will flush cut it. So if you put it on this side, not the inside, this side, you can flush cut it. Then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and about a quarter of an inch down, counting from the bottom of my plier and the short end of the wire, that's my quarter inch, I'm going to roll it over. Just like that. It's a little L shape now, upside down L, and I'm going to place it over my finger just like I did with the um, head pin. Now, I am going to, I want these to be rather big loops, so I'm going about halfway on my plier. And you can mark your plier so each one's the same if you want to after you make one. And I'm just going to start to roll this as far as I can roll it. Again, reposition my wrist by rolling it forward and then continue rolling this. Then you can adjust it again on the end if you want, just like that. And then straighten it out with your chain nose or flat nose pliers and you have one end, you have a eye pin now that you have made. Now we're going to grab one of the beads and we're going to slide it on here. And then I'm going to hold this again between my fingers here and I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and again, right just a little bit above that bead, I'm going to place my pliers and bend the wire over. Now this is a little too long, so I'm going to cut it. And I kind of judge that by the meatiness of my finger here. And I cut it about there. But you can do it, I have big fingers, so that might not work for you. So just, you can measure it if you want, or you can just eyeball it, it doesn't truly matter. They don't have to be exactly the same, just pretty darn close. Now I'm going to place this in about the same place I placed it before, right about here, and start to turn. And then reposition my wrist and begin to turn some more and then finish it with the front of my pliers, like that. Now, you can see that my wires are not exactly the same, so I'm going to take a flat nose plier and I'm going to take my chain nose plier and I'm just going to bend them the same, just like this. Now, they are laying correctly. And make sure you have two of those. We're gonna make several of them, so make a whole bunch, and I'll tell you exactly how many after I have finished designing this. Just make a bunch of them, set them aside, and then grab your pendant. Now, like I said, we've taken the bail portion off and put a jump ring on it. These are the jump rings that came in the treasure box. And if you don't have one, they're about seven millimeter round, six, seven millimeters round. These are nice, sturdy jump rings. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a jump ring on the jump ring that's already on here. And then I'm going to grab another jump ring, open it up, and I'm going to put it on the first jump ring too. So not on the one I just put on, but the one that I first put on. 
and I need to close that better. It's not closed very well. And then close this nice and tightly. I closed this one. I didn't close it very well. be a yucky jump ring. And what you should have now is just two jump rings on either side of the jump ring you just put on, just like that. That's what that should look like. Now you're going to open one more jump ring. And the reason we're doing this is so that we have something to put our dangles on and it will kind of cluster everything together. So we're picking up another jump ring. We're going to go through the two jump rings we just put on. So I'm just pushing them together and I'm just going to go through those two jump rings and not the jump ring I put on previously. Just go through these two. And then lay it out if I can. All right, come here. And let me close this jump ring and I'll show you what I've got. But this one just is not closing. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to lay it so that it is in the middle of the two. But it's really not going to stay there until we attach something to either side. So I'm just letting that jump ring I just put on lay on top of the first jump ring that was already on my pendant. Now, I'm going to grab one of the components I made just to get this kind of spread apart. And I'm just going to open one end of the component, not the head pin ones, but the double looped ones. And I'm going to open this component just like I would open a jump ring and I'm going to put it on one of these side jump rings. So if I can just scoop it on there. Oh, come on, go on there. Okay. And then I'm going to close it just like that. Just close it tightly. And then I will grab the other one, making sure that I'm grabbing the correct one Okay, so when I lay it out, this is what it looks like. You've got two in the middle here and these two on the side. So this is the one I'm targeting here and I'm going to pick up this one. Ah, not the one with the head pins, <laughs> the one with the double loops. Pick up one of these and open it and then just scoop up that jump ring and close it. Now it will be easier for you to stay organized. So all you have to do is turn this so that that middle jump ring is just slightly raised above the other middle jump ring. Let me show you really close what this looks like. See how that one's raised when I pull these up? Now leave this organized like this so that you can see that jump ring right there. and we're going to grab the components we made with the head pins, this one here. And I'm going to open it. This really isn't hard, it's just you just have to fiddle with it so that everything works out the way you want it to. Now I'm going to pick up this jump ring because I have it laid out so I know exactly which one it is and that's that middle one on top and I'm going to put this component on it and close it. I'm just going to lay this back out so I can find that one again. Just lay it out just like that. Then I'm going to grab another one of my head pin crystals, open it, and slide it on that jump ring that's laying out. So I know exactly where I'm going because otherwise it gets jumbled up and you can't find what you're doing. So I'm going to leave that sticking straight out like that again. 
to back off a little. And then I'm going to pick up my third one and I'm going to open it. And I am again going to try to get target this. Maybe I'll pick it up. Target this jump ring right here and then close it. Now I can grab my two beads with the big loops and I can pull them straight out and organize this. Now, when it's up, it's going to have dangles just like this around it. It's going to be really cute. So I'm going to lay it out. So you can see that's what that's going to look like. Now you could put longer ones on here too. You could conceivably use an eye pin and then put another um, one on a head pin and connect them together so that they're even longer and dangle over your main crystal even more. There's several different ways you can do it. But this is the simplest, so this is how I'm going to do it right now. And then we are going to start to make, start to hook together the elements that we've already made. Now, I don't know how many I'm going to use. I'll probably have to stop and make more. But basically, all I'm going to do is open this up, stick it on the loop of this bead here, and close it. Just move your wire in towards the neck of the loop as you close it so that you get it tightly closed. And then I'll put one on this side. Now you can do this with different colors. You could do it with pearls and crystals. You could do it however you want. I've got several of them hooked together here. So I'm just gonna put it on there hooked together. So you could do that first too, hook them all together and then just hook them on. That's fine too. So I'm going to just open this one and I'm just going to slide it on this loop. And this um, particular loop I made is a little bit bigger than my others, but that's all right. I don't care. I'm going to close this. And now I have one half of my necklace started. And I can just continue putting my little loops on the other side. And I am going to have to make more. So I will come back and tell you exactly how many I put on. You can also just make it in the front and connect chain to the back. So you could make it like five inches on either side. That's generally from middle to collarbone. And then you could put chain on the back or you could string something on the back or whatever you want. Because you could just attach some soft flex beading wire with a crimp, be crimp tube on your hook like this and string something if you want. So I'm going to continue making these little components and um, I'll come back and show you exactly what I have. And you'll need a clasp too. You might want to use one of the little silver clasps that came in the box or whatever you'd like to. You could use a lobster claw and a jump ring. Doesn't matter. I'll gather up a clasp too so we can put that on. Okay, so as you can see, I have made the full length of my necklace in the looped connectors here. And I made 15 on each side, and by the time I clasp it, it'll be about a 21, 21 and a half inch necklace. Now you can make less or more units, and it also depends on how big your loops are in between all of those things. But mine turned out to be 30 that I made in total. Now. I want to put my clasping on the end, so all I have to do is grab a jump ring and put this on. So I'm going to use the jump rings that came in the box and see how well that works. Sometimes a, a really wide jump ring like this may inhibit the use of a smaller clasp. So I'm going to see how this works. I'm just going to drop it on here and see how well it goes. So just open your jump ring, slide it on your last loop, close your jump ring, and then we'll do the other side also. And I'll show you this time since I didn't show you the first time. So my jump ring, twist it open, drop on the clasp, drop it on the loop, and close it. And now I'm going to test to see if this will pass through nicely. And it does, it's perfectly fine. So I wanted to show you, let me back off here. I wanted to show you 
if I can hold it correctly so you can actually see it, how perfectly this dangles in front. The way we did the cluster with the um, jump ring, the extra jump ring, ring in the front, this hangs perfectly. And every time you pick it up, as long as you're holding it the right direction, of course, and put it on with this in front, it's going to hang, these three beads are going to hang perfectly in front of that bigger bead. And it's just really pretty. The whole thing is really pretty. Once you've done, once you're done, and I need to do mine, rinse it with a little bit of dish soap, dry it with a soft microfiber cloth or a soft um, tea towel, dish towel, something like that, and you, your sparkle will come back because it always surprises me how dirty these beads really are. Once you wash them, you really get some sparkle. So. Anyway, that's how you make this necklace and this bracelet. And I am going to put together kits for this bracelet. And um, in the intro, I'll give you all the information on that since I haven't, at this point in time, exactly put it all together yet. But I will. And then we will come back and we'll make a couple more things because I still, there's, that's the thing about with so much in these boxes, I can make a million tutorials and still not have used everything. We still have these little pendants. We have um, a bow pendant. We have um, a bunch of links. We have some bells. Several things I haven't used yet. And I still have a bunch of these green beads left and a few of these beads left and I, here's the little bow so <clears throat> I might come up with maybe just a really simple um I don't know maybe a charm bracelet or I may use these links too these are perfect for earrings you could make because they give you so many pairs of them you could make quite a few pairs of earrings they are so cute you could even dangle this guy off of it and then put a couple other little beads on either side those would be really pretty or it would be a really pretty pendant this way too for a necklace just put this on here and make a necklace but I'll make a couple more things but for right now I just wanted to get these two projects done, keep the video shorter, and that's that. Bye-bye.